Grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace to You Gathering here in Lexington, Virginia. Hope you're having a great Sunday so far. Uh, last week I was already working in the snow coming down. Actually, by this time, um, I hadn't quite come down, but uh, I was in preparation to work in the snow. Uh, so it's nice to actually be here and give this message kind of a normal time on Sunday and get to go to the local church that we're attending. Uh, but I hope this finds you well. The message today is like clockwork. The expression like clockwork um, looked up the, you know, I've used the, the idiom several times, but wanted to give you a somewhat precise definition and here's a definition to proceed or progress an operation in a dependable way dependable means it's a surefire thing it's going to happen on a regular basis it's going to work well another thing you could use would be it's working like a fine-tuned machine now you, you tune up, you used to be able to tune up old engines and whatnot, and they would operate efficiently. So what am I talking about? Well, I've got a cuckoo clock that if I take care of the chain weights in a timely fashion every day, everything works perfectly. You know, the cuckoo comes out and makes noise every 15 minutes. The pendulum swings and keeps the time decently. And uh, we've got a clock that is working. And to run like clockwork in our lives, we need the hand of God doing being the source that makes everything work out. Jesus, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, who is also the author and perfecter of our faith, is the one who is the source of our life working like clockwork. But life is not going to be as it should be unless he is the source. John 15, <clears throat> 1 through 17, some of my favorite verses of scripture talk about the source. Yeah, I just envision, here I am, I'm pulling the chains, the weight chains, to make sure the clock goes dependably throughout the day. The good thing is we don't have to live this life in our human strength. We have a creator who became our savior and is our sustainer who does the work for us. And we live out of his work in and through us. There are some key reminders that we need to know and some of that you'll see in John 15. John 15 starting in verse 1 we're going to go through verse 17. Jesus is speaking here to his disciples. I am the true vine and my father is the vineyard keeper. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit he removes and he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. Other versions say abide. What that means is to hunker down, to focus, to make sure 
that Christ is first and foremost in your life. He is the Lord. And Jesus says in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. Now get that. It says we can do nothing without him. My cuckoo clock can do nothing without me adjusting the weight chains every day. Twice. We can do nothing unless the Lord's hand is upon our lives of eternal significance. You know, sure, we can run around and do certain things because he has crafted humans to function in their own strength for a limited time. But of eternal significance, of real eternal purpose, we can do nothing. So what God's word says, and by experience, I've experienced it as well. And many others have as well who didn't follow Christ and now follow Christ. And sometimes we fall short and we get Christ off center in our lives and, and we see what happens when he is not preeminent, when he's not first. We see that our life is not as fulfilling as it is when we hunker down in the reality that he is first and foremost in our lives and he is the source of all life. Now, I had a conversation with a friend recently and he was telling me that he was having the same dream over and over and over again, that he basically was struggling to find purpose. Well, I'm gonna share your purpose today and it goes hand in hand with this whole message on clockwork. We, in our deepest self, only can serve that purpose when we are linked up with Christ. When, when our life is hidden with God in Christ. And we're going to look at Ephesians concerning that. But let me finish John 15. And let me go back to verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit, because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch, and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me... In my words remain in you. Ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. So there is a correlation between remaining, hunkering down, abiding in Jesus Christ. There is a correlation between he being first and then fruit from your life developing. You will flourish. I'm not saying you won't go through trials and tribulation, but you will flourish in your soul when Christ is first. And one of the byproducts, one of the fruits that you can see that this is happening, we can see in verses 9 through 17, we are acting out one of his greatest commands. As a father has loved me, I have also loved you. Verse 9 of John 15. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. Have you dwelt on his love for you today? I encourage you to do so. He loves you so much. I have spoken these things to you so that you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. See if we can get this down that Christ is first and he loves us so much and he wants us to remain in that love, then we can have a joy that's complete. 
we don't have to wonder anymore. We can rest secured in his love. This is my command. Verse 12 of chapter 15. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you slaves anymore because a slave doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made you known. I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you that you should go out and produce fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you, love one another. And here's a little aside, verse 16, go back to it. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Be careful of adding Jesus to your agenda. He chooses you. When the Holy Spirit opens your eyes, the eyes of your soul to know the need for him, when we realize that we are sinners apart from him and that we are sinners in need of his saving grace, then we have to proclaim that he chose us. He opened our eyes. We didn't do anything. We didn't accept Jesus. We didn't we didn't make a choice of our own. We were blind and now we see. He chose us. Ephesians 2 8 through 10. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. They see my cuckoo clock, when it's working properly, it can't boast in the fact that it's a Black Forest German awesome clock and it can do whatever it wants to when it wants to because it can't can't do anything unless I wind the chain with weights on it so the pendulum will start swinging again it can't do a darn thing unless I keep it up and I've been keeping it up for the past two weeks now and it's kind of cool seeing how it works well and that's the thing our life works well because Jesus sustains us because he saved us from ourselves let me read this again. Ephesians 2, 8. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. What is our purpose? This is our purpose here. Our purpose, my friend, are the good works that we were created in Christ Jesus to accomplish. We don't have to be unaware anymore. We can know our purpose in life. Read that again. For we are his creation created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. You don't have to be lost, my friend. Your life can work like clockwork. It can be a fine-tuned machine. And we can be fruitful. We can love one another extremely well by remaining in his love, abiding in his, and the reality that he is the life, the way, the truth, and the life. We don't have to be duped by the enemy anymore. You see, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come to give a life and life to the fullest. And lastly, as I was reading in Psalm 105, and it seems like it's been a regular occurrence in these messages that the Psalms that I'm reading daily go hand in hand with the message that I'm going to share. But here is an admonition for you, an encouragement. 
Psalm 105. Give thanks to Yahweh, call on his name, proclaim his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell about all his wonderful works, honor his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek you, seek Yahweh, rejoice. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his wonders and the judgments he has pronounced. You offsprings of Abraham, his servant Jacob's descendants, his chosen ones, may you be encouraged by the word of God today. And may your life work like clockwork. The Lord bless and keep you. In Jesus' name.